Okay, first of all, some new presets for you. One, two, three. They're available on the Rhapsody Discord in the resources channel. There's also a lot of other pretty ones in the presets section for free. With the new patch being out, I thought I'd make a quick video showing you all the QOL and how I set up my presets and all that as a veteran player. I think supports in particular will find this helpful since we have to juggle so many specs and skill trees and all that stuff. Let's get right into it. Starting with presets, you'll need to set up each page individually before you can use the integrated preset or all-in-one feature. If you already have your integrated presets set up, use the timestamps below to skip to the new features. Okay, first of all, we want to hit K to bring up your skills book. On my main bard, I have one page for Chaos Dungeon, one page for Raiding, and one last page for Soloing or DPSing. The third one is optional and it also costs crystals, so you'll be okay with just a Chaos build and a Raid build. If you need help with builds, check out the bard guide in the description. Next, hit P to bring up your character pane. Here you'll want to set up your two gear sets. For my main bard, I have one set for support and one set for DPSing. My DPS set is just a collection of random crit gear with the True Courage engraving from farming Argos and Oriha. A little tip here, make sure you lock all your accessories. The preset function is a little wonky and it will sometimes unequip items when you swap between presets. Or especially if you start messing around with them, this can cause the unfortunate incident where you accidentally dismantle some accessories you're actually using. I've done it myself and I've seen a lot of other people do the same, so if you lock everything, you are safe. Okay, now we're ready to use the integrated preset. Hit Alt E to open the menu. You can label these to make it more clear. On my chaos preset, I make sure I have my chaos skill tree and my DPS gear selected. You can also use presets for your cards, gems, and tripods. Usually these will be the same, but if you have different presets, you can select them here. Your tripods default to using the tripods on your gear, but for some reason if you have a second page of DPS tripods in your tripod inventory, you can select that as well. Most importantly, on my chaos page, I have a separate pet selected. One that gives me crit. That's because I'm wearing crit gear, so using a crit pet will give me that extra 10% buff. On my support page, I select support skills and my support gear. I also make sure my other pet is selected, the one that gives me swiftness or spec depending on what build I am. My bossing preset is basically the same as my chaos one, just with a different set of skills and a crit card deck instead of a healing one. It's pretty simple, so go ahead and set up all your presets. And if you ever want to swap between these presets, you can use this menu or the shortcut keys. By default, the first preset on the left is control A, the second one is Control S, and so on. Okay, now that we have our presets set up, we can use the integrated dungeon feature. This is new to the May update, and you can access it with Alt Q. This lets you queue for a variety of content from almost anywhere in the game without being in town. For example, if I select Chaos Dungeon, at the bottom right, you'll see a new dropdown. This lets you select one of your integrated presets, which we just set up, and when you enter this content, it will automatically use that preset. This means no more accidentally going into Guardian Raids with your Chaos build or whatever. Take the time to go through each content here through this Alt-Q menu and set up your presets. Chaos for Chaos Dungeon, support for Guardian Raids, and so on. Next, let's talk about Auto Dismantle. If you bring up the Auto Dismantle menu from your inventory, you'll see a lot more features. Notably, in this update, we got the ability to auto dismantle items with certain stats. This just saves you time when sorting through all your loot, so I have it turned on. If you don't trust it, or you like looking at items, you don't have to use this. But if you do use it, you can select the three quote unquote useless stats. Some of you might want to leave Domination or Endurance on as they can be used for GBG or open world PvP, but I don't care that much, so I just have everything selected. You'll want to select Relic and Tier 3 for the item rank and tier. Although accessories with these selected stats get dismantled regardless of rank or tier, tripod items do not. And so, if you want tripod gear to be filtered as well, you need to select these settings. If you notice, gear with favorited engravings will not be automatically dismantled, even if they have these selected stats. That means that if you get an item with one of the bad stats, but really really good engravings, it will still pass through your filter. I recommend having this on at the start because relic gear with subpar stats still sell decently well. So what are favorited engravings? If you hit Alt-I, you can click the little star next to each engraving to favorite it. That ensures any accessory that has these engravings won't be automatically dismantled. Unfortunately, you have to select favorites for each character, which is tedious, to say the least. 
but at least you only need to do it one time. I'll briefly scroll through my favorites here if you want to check them and copy them, so you can just pause the video. Now let's talk about some new UI options. Under settings in gameplay, controls, and display, you'll find the new head and back indicators. I've left the settings as default as I think the thick line is easiest to see. All I did was change the color a little and you can tweak this to your liking. As a little bonus, if you wanted to find the settings to make the loot pop-ups more compact, it's also here. Just scroll down to the item acquired notification. The next thing I get asked a lot on stream is about my macros. You can now set it up to automatically use a text macro when you use a certain skill. And I'll show you in a second how to set that up, as well as tell you the reason why I don't actually use it. First, go to Community, Macro Text, and set up your macros. I have three that I use frequently. One for Guardian Tune, to tell people they have CC immunity, and two for my two different damage Z buffs. I never use a one bar Courage buff, and I don't feel the need for a healing macro, so I don't have those. You can add them if you like. Now, go down to Hotkeys, Skills. If you notice, next to each skill, you can select a macro text from the dropdown. These are the ones we just set up. If you select one, every time you press the button for that skill, it will automatically fire your text macro. So why don't I use it? Mainly, it's incredibly, incredibly spammy. If you're playing a swiftness bard especially, your cooldowns are pretty short, so just imagine spamming the party window full of your macros. At some point, people will stop paying attention to them entirely since there's so much text. Less is more. I only want to tell my party when I use Guardian Tune during a CC attack, like Descaluda's lasers or Voltin's ice trap. That way they can take advantage of it to do more damage. I don't need to be spamming them with text every time I cast Guardian Tune for damage reduction. The same goes for my Z buff. This auto macro only uses your macro each time you press Z, but you have no control over the bubbles so it can't differentiate between 2 bar and 3 bar for example. That's why I prefer using mine manually, but if you want to make a more general macro and use this feature, that's totally up to you. Lastly, party frames. If you go into a party with anyone, you can fiddle with them. You now have the option for more compact party frames as well as changing them to be horizontal. I set up my party frames horizontally so I can glance at them without looking away from the boss. This is just personal preference though, so play around with your own setup. If you find the frames are too big for horizontal, you can go into the UI settings and turn down your UI scaling. I have mine on the smallest setting. As for raid frames, if you're in an 8-man raid, I don't know if you can fix the position of the other party's frames. Everything I've tried seems to not work, and they reset each time, so if you know how, let me know in the comments. Another thing you might want to do is go into gameplay and name tags, and turn off all the name tags for people in your raid, as well as your guildmates. That way, if you're in an 8-man raid, only the nameplates of your party members will be visible. This is important because none of your effects or heals or shields or anything will affect anyone else, so if you have all the nameplates showing, sometimes you might drop a heal, for example, on the other party, which it doesn't affect. Personally, I leave this on, but I thought I'd tell you guys just in case you're wondering how to do that. Anyway, I hope this QL well video makes your life a little bit more easy and smooth. If you have any questions, don't be shy to ask me here or on stream at my Twitch. Thanks for watching, see you next time, bye you!